All right, so previously we were covering the threshold customization options. In this video, we're going to be going through the column settings for the waterfall visual. Now, as always, within the sample report, you already have some pre-built examples that you can play around with. Whereas in our case, we're going to be going into the training view and we're going to be building the waterfall visual from scratch. So first things first, let's add an instance of the waterfall visual. Let's resize it and also disable the background and the title since we're not going to be using those. As for the visual setup itself, I'm going to be using categories in the category field and results for 2020 in my changes field. Now, if we open up formatting options and open up column settings, you can see that the first four settings that I have here essentially allow me to increase the padding on both sides of the column, so the left and the right hand side. Afterwards, we have two settings that allow you to customize the total columns. The first one is total category name. By default, this is going to be pre-filled with just the text total. But if you want to change it, it's a free text field, so you can write in whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to write total or end value. There we go. Now, another option that you can do here with the total columns is you can change the subtotal mode to none. What this does is it eliminates the total column, so I can focus only on the changes itself. Now, we do have two more variations left, so last and all. For these two to work, I actually need some additional data. So I'm going to go to the fields list and I'm going to add a sequence. There we go. Now, when we first look at the chart, we can actually see that new placeholders appeared within the chart, but it don't have any values for these. So net income, income before, operation income, and so forth. Now, if we go into the column settings right here, scroll down and change the subtotal mode to last, it's going to dynamically calculate the last column. Keep in mind that you still have these placeholders. The reason why they are there is because you provided a sequence field. So it determines that there is supposed to be a column there, but it doesn't have a value for it yet. Now, if we go into the subtotal mode and change this to all, you can actually see that every single column now has a value. And those columns that didn't have a value are considered now to be subtotals. So essentially, this allows you to dynamically calculate the values and define your own sequence within the visual. All right, that's going to be it for the column settings, and I'll see you in the next video.